the libertarian case against open borders. Many people in the USA have begun to support open borders. You would expect this from leftist progressives and people who loaf their own culture. But would you also expect this from libertarians? The official position of the mainstream National Libertarian Party is the support for open borders and free migration. And this position also applies to most libertarians outside of a few fringe right-wing groups within the libertarian movement. In this video, I explain why the idea of open borders is incompatible with libertarianism and that the quote-unquote right to travel does not exist in a libertarian social order. There are also many reasons to oppose free migration and open borders, even if you are a non-libertarian. Before we can analyze immigration from a national or global scale, immigration and the right to travel must be analyzed through the lens of private property. In a private property society, or as Hoppe calls it, a libertarian social order, every claimed territory or piece of land, which includes buildings and roads, will be owned by an individual, groups of individuals, or legal entities, such as companies. This will mean that the land will be controlled by the individual or legal entity that is in ownership of it, meaning it is their private property, gained through inheritance, and trade, or homesteading. A person would not be allowed to enter private property unless the owner allows them to enter, or temporarily invites them into their property as a guest. If an individual wishes to stay in a privately owned area, such as a community, they have to request the permission of the owner to either purchase or rent property. Thus, a totally privatized society will be as closed as the particular property owner's desire, and the movement of people will be controlled. Now, onto why the right to travel does not exist in a libertarian social order. Firstly, in order to clear any confusion with regards to the word right, rights are merely ethical principles that are the entitlements to be left alone, derived from property rights, which themselves are derived from the very existence of humanity. Rights are inalienable, and thus no entity can confiscate these rights, your right to life, liberty, property and the pursuit of happiness is the are the principles that no one can kill steal from or enslave another human no one can derive them of the right to freely act this means that no one has a right to another person's labor and property as this implies the use of force to steal either directly or indirectly using an organization such as the state now that the term rights have been defined what is the right to travel? The right to travel means that you have a right to be left alone as you travel across a given area to, a, to your destination, or you travel from one point to another. In theory, this sounds reasonable, but there is more to the story than just that. If a person is traveling on unclaimed territory, or an area in which no one is in, is owner, is in ownership of, meaning that no one has an exclusive control of the scarce resources within that area, it is fine that you are traveling through this area. Since no one is in ownership of this property, no one has a right to the valid claim to the exclusive control of scarce resources within that area. Thus, a person can freely travel from one place to another in that given area without interference. However, if an individual is on private property in which someone is in ownership of that territory, the story changes. An individual who has ownership of, the, of a specific piece of land or property has the right to be left alone on his property, and thus another individual can't interfere or enter their property without explicit permission to do so. Traveling on that area, then, is a violation of the owner's property rights, and thus the right to travel doesn't exist if in on private property or on property in which someone is in ownership of. The movement of people would be controlled by the property owners. An example being a person doesn't want a random stranger off the street into his house and and you don't let a the door of your house open all the time. You don't open the door of your house to any random person. As mentioned before, if every piece of land 
is owned by an individual or legal entity, you do not have a right to travel, which is to violate a person's right to the exclusive right to have and use their property, as only the property owner has the exclusive right to use their property in which they are in ownership of. Now it has been identified that open borders nor the right to travel exists in a libertarian social order. What about immigration in relations to nations, public borders, and public property? Public property is property that the state has ownership over, meaning that only the state and the citizens living under that government can use it. Public property is essentially, by this definition, stolen private property, and was funded using the money confiscated from the citizens of the territory which the state has possession over. Using this reasoning, we can conclude that public property, despite the state's ownership of it, is actually the legitimate private property of the individuals that were stolen from in that territory by their government. Since public property is really just stolen private property, the decision on what to be done with it, specifically in this case the immigration policies, who should be allowed to enter the property, should be decided by the proprietors, not the government. Open borders is a compulsory opening by the centralized state. The government, which controls all the streets and public land areas, does not reflect the wishes of the proprietors, of the proprietors who the property has either been stolen from or created using taxes, which is money forcibly confiscated by the threat of force by the state. Either way, open borders are not only po- are not only impossible without the enforcement of the centralized states, or in, or meaning that they're only possible with the enforcement of the centralized state, and most people do not agree or want the flood of illegal immigrants into their country. Another argument against open borders is that immigrants cannot use the state's public property. Public property, even if a person doesn't consider it stolen private property, still belongs to the citizens of the country who pay taxes towards funding the property. Under an open border policy, people who had nothing to do with funding the, pu- the public property can use it the same way as citizens who paid taxes towards it. Immigrants, who the, tr- who the true property owners don't even want in the country, are using the property that they paid for and possibly damaging or even destroying it in some cases. The immigrants use, take and use the resources of someone else, such as public roads to every resident's doorsteps, make use of all schools and hospitals, and to access employment and residential housing. All this is happening while they're being provided with welfare and protected by a various amount of non-discrimination laws. Of a welfare state and open borders, both enforce their state coercion and theft. The main reason for immigrants entering the country is not in search of economic opportunity or personal freedom. It is to abuse the system and live off the wealth and labor of others. In the countries that were met with mass migration, there were catastrophic results that followed, a complete breakdown of law and order, abuse of the welfare system that led to economic stagnation, and a new population that doesn't assimilate in the countries they settled in. Open borders are not only incompatible with libertarianism, but it is a state-enforced program to ensure chaos, economic regression, and the destruction of the host nation through mob rule and multiculturalism. Thank you for watching this video. Goodbye, and enjoy the rest of your day.